guide to NPS series continues with this look at how to analyse and act upon the responses you get back from sending NPS surveys. The main way to analyse NPS results is to track overall NPS score over time. NPS is a common key performance indicator for the organisation as a whole and potentially for any of its constituent products, services or franchises. We covered how to calculate your overall NPS score earlier in this series. For the rest of this session, we're going to look at what to do with NPS responses over and above calculating NPS score. There are a couple of high level ways to break down response data to present NPS status. The first of these is to show results for each of the 11 score categories, zero through 10. Basically, what rating everyone gave divided into each of the possible options. This immediately highlights your modal NPS rating, the most common that people give you. This can then be tracked over time. The second is a breakdown of NPS responses by NPS group categorization. This separates all your respondents and their scores into respective camps, promoters, passives and detractors. You would do this anyway in the process of calculating your NPS score, but this way you keep track of the relative differences in size between the groups and can track this over time too. Next, you can correlate NPS responses with segmentation data about each customer. Let's consider some examples of this. One, showing NPS ratings according to how long respondents have been customers for. This will reveal how new customers' opinions differ to longer term customers. It will show up trends too, like whether customers' appreciation of your company steadily matures over time, or if ratings tend to start high and then degrade. Two, NPS ratings according to purchase history or customer tier. Here you can show how customers' impressions of you differ according to the types of products or services they consumed. If you have customer tiers like gold, silver and bronze for different service levels, you can correlate that too. The same could apply to correlations against revenue spent. Three, NPS ratings according to age, gender and other demographics. This answers the question, what types of customers like us the most? It's great for tallying against your target customer personas for sales activity and for mapping out opportunities in your addressable market. These insights could be influential in how you target marketing, promotions and communications in general. The fourth and final step would be to correlate NPS ratings with the additional insights garnered from follow-up questions. We cover follow-up questions in several other sessions in this series. It's typically the why question that you can pose to customers straight after they've rated you on the NPS scale. You could, for example, show the top three reasons why NPS ratings between zero and five are given, or Contrast the principal areas detractors feel you should improve in with areas promoters believe you excel in. There are lots of ways to analyse the NPS data, but there's little point unless you then act upon the insights you uncover. Acting upon NPS data is imperative. There's limited value in simply tracking NPS for the sake of it. Before you do, it's important to remember that NPS is not simply an aggregate trending total. It is first and foremost the view of an individual customer. Beginning at the individual level, the extremes of NPS response should be acted upon immediately. What I mean by extremes is the very high scorers and the very low scorers. Very high scorers are already classified as promoters, the people who award you nines and tens out of 10. Very low scorers are at the other end of the spectrum. The detractors group doesn't match this precisely because it includes ratings from zero all the way up to six, but it's up to you where you draw the line. Any professional NPS system should be able to flag responses by rating as well as by NPS categorization. 
Imagine a customer who has just given you an NPS rating of 10. As we covered in other sessions, you'll have a standard landing page or email acknowledgement thanking them for their input. You'll have a follow-up question lined up to try to uncover the reasons why they scored you so highly. And then what? This isn't really taking advantage of the fact you just discovered a customer who practically loves you. Consider going another stage further with some of these ideas. First, you could encourage them to post an independent review on a relevant review site. Some links from the landing page could accomplish this, or you could just approach them and ask if they'd considered it. Second, how about requesting a short testimonial? If they've left great comments in support of the rating they gave you, this would just be a case of asking for permission to use them internally like sharing them with staff about the great job that they're doing and externally with the prospective customers and on the website. Third, you could find out their willingness to be part of a promotional case study, either written or video based. You can never have too many of these. It's okay if they don't want to because of privacy concerns or of time constraints They'll just be flattered that you asked. Fourth, you could invite them to participate in a market research focus group or product testing. Who wouldn't want to help with R&D at a company they're happily recommending? They may not have the time or inclination, but it's fine to ask. Just the act of asking could reinforce their sense of connection and loyalty. Steps like these maximize the value of having NPS Promoter in your midst. It also validates and extends a tangible relationship between you and the customer. Most of these suggestions drive mutual value, not just value to your organization. For example, product testing could be really cool if you're a promoter of Harley Davidson or EA Sports, as well as helping those companies create better products. Let's go from one extreme to another. A really low scorer who gave you a rating of three or less. Again, they get a stock response and follow-up question that's sensitive to their viewpoint as a detractor. Here, the opportunity is to learn as much as possible about this individual's perspective and experience. You need to personally contact them to understand their situation and story in maximum detail. They took the time to tell you you didn't meet their expectations. They didn't have to do that. So this is the least you can do. If you do this right, you'll make the customer feel valued and more positive towards your brand. Obviously, you should say you're sorry and work to remedy the situation or issue that's given rise to their low score. But there's some mutual benefit here too. Interactions and conversations like this cast light on previously unknown glitches in your processes. Glitches you can fix so it doesn't happen again and cause other low NPS scores. The insights you garner should also feed into internal training materials that coach customer facing staff how to stop certain issues arising in the future. We haven't even covered how reacting to a bad NPS rating in the right way helps you retain customers who might otherwise churn. We often see something called the service recovery paradox. This happens when there's been a problem that gets flagged up by poor NPS reading, which is then successfully fixed to the customer's satisfaction. This process of turning a negative experience into a positive one doesn't just restore the customer back to their natural equilibrium, it can actually lift them to a higher NPS level than if the poor experience never happened. Whether customer feedback is positive or negative, the process of following up individuals is called closing the loop. The critical aspect of closing the loop is seeing the feedback process through to a conclusion. In other words, contacting the customer who responded and completing all necessary follow-up actions.